having trouble beating that one friend that always seems to get the better of you, or maybe you're getting frustrated trying to reach the next floor of the rank tower. If you're feeling like no matter how hard you grind, you just can't seem to beat that May player who seems a little trigger happy with that dolphin, then I have three tips that are surefire in leveling up your skills and getting you past that wall that every player hits when playing fighting games. First things first, we have to start with the most important fundamental in every fighting game. Dominating the neutral game will most definitely be the best way to win any match, and the best way to stay on top of the competition in the neutral is understanding what your best buttons are to stay off the receiving end of some huge damage. Now a brief explanation of what the neutral game is. Neutral game is any point in the game where you and your opponent have distance between you and neither of you are blocking and attacking. The best example is right at the start of the game where you're able to throw out an attack and take a step forward and backwards unhindered. At this point, you should use your best options and press your best buttons to slowly put your opponent in a favorable position for you to dish out huge amounts of damage and rack up as much damage on your way to that position. For most characters, your slash and heavy slash are great buttons to press to get good poke damage off against your opponent, but usually you want to see what buttons are long reaching and quick to come out. For some it could be their sweep attack or crouch kick, others it could be their far slash or even their forward punch. You can usually eyeball it or even see what other players are doing, but for those who are super careful and precise, there are resources to see the exact frame data for moves on your specific character, such as Dust Loop, link in the description. Once you know what your best buttons are, you want to space yourself with your opponent so that you won't whiff a button or throw out an attack and have it hit nothing. Some characters do better at longer range like Axel, some better up close like Potemkin. Though there are a lot of universal systems and mechanics, with every character, they vary in a lot of ways. Some might seem better than others, but everyone has options. This also applies for special moves too. If you have a far reaching projectile move such as Kai or Eno, or even a fast paced gap closer like Giovanna and Sol, it's good to be able to cycle through your options and punish unsuspecting players mashing at full screen. There are times where it seems like I've hit twice as much as my opponent, but get blindsided at just how much less health and damage I've done to them. While it's true some characters hit a lot harder and some characters seem to blow up a lot faster, being able to optimize your combos and damage will make sure you find yourself leading the game in health and able to close out some games confidently. While it's best to try and learn those flashy multi-hit combos you see on YouTube, it's not always necessary. And many of you probably don't want to blister up your hands grinding some combos in training mode for hours on end. But what you can and should do is learn your character's BNB or bread and butter combo. This is what will make sure you are able to always get a decent amount of damage and put yourself in a great position to keep getting that damage every time you successfully get a hit on your opponent. There are tons of character specific guides out there that will show you your best starting attack and ending attack for good combos. And there are multiple routes between those two that will have you dishing out explosive damage. You could go for an easy Gatling combo using close slash into far slash into heavy slash into a special move or get a little more creative if you want but consistency is key, and you should make sure you drop your combo as least as possible. It's good to know a good BNB combo in these scenarios. When you're mid screen, in the neutral, when you have your opponent in the corner, and when you get a successful counter hit off. Mid screen or the neutral game, your goal should be to close the distance between you and your opponent and try to push them towards the corner. You want to try and do combos that keep them at the best distance for you to throw out more attacks and keep them blocking. In the corner, you want to rack up as much damage as possible and make sure you're able to press an attack right as your opponent is waking up. It's also good to know when the wall is about to break. Some characters might not want to break the wall and keep their opponent cornered. Some might change their combo ender depending on if they have the meter for an overdrive super. Getting a counter hit changes the amount of time you have to do a follow up. Now instead of your normal route, you could fit much larger, slower hitting moves to continue a combo. Now being able to react to a counter hit could be difficult. It's best to try and practice getting used to switching up your normal combo route to something a lot more heavy and satisfying, but you could always just stick to the normal route in these situations. The third and final tip of this video is something that a lot of you will probably struggle with at first, but over time, the more you look out and try and incorporate this fundamental, the easier it will come to you. 
Being able to read your opponent is a key aspect of fighting games at every level of play. Knowing how to punish people will be key to asserting dominance and controlling the pace of the game and making sure you're always getting your turn back to press more buttons and throw out more moves. You have to be able to recognize patterns in your opponent's play and punish them accordingly. Some players have a tendency of jumping in or air dashing into you with a button. If you see that they are doing that, wait for them to do it and react with a forward punch or anti-air move. Do this enough times and it will scare your opponent into hesitating a lot more. Or it won't and you'll be able to get free damage every time they do it. Notice your opponent likes to grab? Try jumping when you think he'll do it again. He will miss and be stuck in a recovery animation, allowing you to press whatever button you want to punish them. Things like these are very prevalent in fighting games, and players build up tendencies at every level of play. Even pro players have patterns and habits that get them into a lot of trouble. But understanding when your opponent feels comfortable doing something is key to flipping the tables and putting them in a position to be a lot slower and mess up a lot more. And if you see that your opponent is starting to punish your tendencies, switch it up and go for a different option. Try and bait your opponent into thinking you will do something, then go for a different option to keep them second guessing and more vulnerable. Those tips are surefire ways to level you up quickly and get you to the next floor. While you can dive deeper into each aspect and get a more fleshed out and complex understanding of each, which we will dive deeper to later on in this channel, all can be quickly understood on a more basic and fundamental level that will act as your gateway into the next caliber of fighting games. If you liked the video, subscribe, like, comment, share this video with anyone you think can benefit. I do a lot of fighting game and other game related things on this channel. Uh, yeah, stick around.